So we have seen a lot of uh, TLS applications also in practical use to uh, uh, yesterday and uh, we always have this problem we need many positions to scan uh, to avoid the occlusion and we Austrian Foresters are kind of bitterlich minded, so Professor Bitterlich was in his year, last year my professor at the University of Agriculture in Vienna. And when we are using the radar scope in, in the forest, we are used to step just one step aside to see a tree which might be hidden behind another tree. So this occlusion uh, topic is part of the Bitterlich sample. Uh, plot and you can do many sample plots. You have this uh, in, in, yeah, integrated into your way how you see the forest. And therefore, uh, it was for me uh, a logical thing to put the scan not in the center of the tree board, but uh, to have an out layer, to have a protruding arm and a scan from this and, and the uh, technology where the scanners become smaller and smaller and cheaper and more lightweight uh, from automotive, uh, autonomous driving uh, it, it was a, a logical thing to, to try this out so um, this is the concept and I got a patent on this uh, scanning system uh, and the prototype is under construction I will tell you more uh, how it works. So this is my professional record. I'm always a practitioner. Uh, have been for my whole life in, in at the state forest uh, institution and uh, private company uh, providing the uh, forest inventory and mapping services. And I was had to earn money with uh, my projects. So I. The application guy and not so much the research guy, although we have good partners in research. So, my I, I have operational usage from ALS data since 2006 because uh, there were already a lot of ALS available in Austria. And we have a wall to wall coverage since 2013, and I have the second coverage. Now, and we can look at the height growth and, and all those big, nice things. Uh, yeah, these are my partners in research. You're here with sharing the booth over there uh, with us, and the Technical University of Vienna will be the main host of next uh, Civil Laser 2021. And as we are uh, the guys providing inventory of the commercial forest, the Easy EZO, uh, they do the biodiversity monitoring and monitoring of protection areas. So we are mainly using the similar techniques or same techniques and working together in projects. And then we have an air company who has a ultra light plane and so on. So uh, the, the terrestrial laser scanning is not a uh, for itself, but it's in a multi-stage uh, inventory concept embedded. So we start usually with a wall-to-wall -wall coverage uh, of ALS data, and we have uh, as a phase two very high resolution uh, ALS data from drones or from the light planes with the new real uh, technology you can get even from the manned uh, airplanes. 1,000 points per square meter, you can go into tree modeling uh, and, and yeah. So, back to the scanner. Um, in, if, if an inventory guy goes out uh, and puts a scanner somewhere, uh, the, the NFI go to a sample plot which, which is marked on a, on a, in, in the soil which they have probably visited for 50 years, every 5 years, every 10 years and um, they want to uh, have repeatability, they want to scan from the same, same uh, very same point uh, every 5 years and therefore uh, this scanner has the advantage you get from one scan 
uh, almost occlusion-free uh, scans, and, and you, if you do the, the manual assessment, the visual assessment as well, on the sample plot, uh, the, the scanner has time to scan, so you can scan half of an hour, it can scan even an hour if you have to do very much there, you get a very high angular resolution in this case. So there is a slow horizontal resolution of the arm like this, and a very fast uh, vertical resolution with a field E16 or a quantum G and 8, the quantum G is the advantage. Uh, those are the two tenses we are trying out at the moment. Quantum G has the advantage that it gets three returns. Um, but it has the disadvantage that it's only eight layers uh, in one time. And yeah, this we are looking forward to also use solid state LiDAR uh, on, on this sensor. Uh, there are some upcoming coming sensors for automotive as well. And they all some of them combine already an RGB camera with a solid state LiDAR. Um, yeah. We are looking at those developments. So, if you do a chip scan, what we did to evaluate this before the machine was constructed is we took a real scanner and put it on uh, a radius of one meter with 20 scans uh, in total um, on, on some places. This is a place in northern Austria, very dense forest, with uh, it's an example. 30, uh, 53 a square meter per hectare as basal area, and it's a very uh, inhomogeneous forest, so the the uh, diameters are uh, exception saturated with a factor, but you can see the diversity here. And this is only five point five five positions out of the 20 uh, positions. Uh, and the color indicates how many uh, uh, from how many of those five positions a stand was detected. So the dark greens are detected from all five positions, and the red ones are not detected at all from these five positions. This outcome gets even better if you have twenty or five. Uh, the, 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 the red uh, trees will be even less, but. If you look at uh, with a middle factor in mind, um, uh, and you are looking for the basal area, uh, the, probably the biggest tree, uh, to, to which is not detected, is this one, and it's a 30 centimeter diameter and, and uh, 27 meters from the center, away from the center. So you would uh, need a middle factor from less than 0.5 that this is an omitted tree in, in the sense of, of detection of basal area. Uh, this is uh, the same example with uh, the scale from from uh, 1 to, mm, to 20. So you see there are even less uh, red trees uh, in there, very small ones which are not discovered. Uh, and uh, you see the, 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 pro the system is very efficient. Um, this is a, a stand with not too much other story. There is a, a regeneration, uh, but it's a mainly coniferous stand, and it's, it's quite obvious that if, if you are in, uh, in uh, leaf conditions, you, you have to scan. Uh, leave off uh, time and uh, that might cause some shortcomings in tropical forest, of course. But what we did not expect that these very, very small movements is even an advantage in stands like we had visited yesterday. Because if you look not only between the stems to, to other stems, but you also look between the leaves to other steps. This small movement uh, causes much better detection of steps between uh, the, the leaves uh, of another story. So, uh, there's another thing. Um, the 
if you get this high angular resolution, you, you, you can capture some uh, images as well. Um, you have still shortcomings um, concerning the movement from wind. So, if you can produce a depth image with good edges, and uh, we will probably try out the, the edge detection instead of cylinder fitting. Uh, yeah, as I already told, uh, the whole thing could lead to a renaissance of Titanic method because you can work with factors 1 or factors 0 0.7 or factors 0 0.5 regarding the understory and the density of, of the stem. So you are not counting uh, something like 12 trees, you are uh, counting something like 50 or 100 trees just from one single position. Um, yeah, this is another visualization of, of the uh, test scans. In this case, the color uh, at the stem, uh, here with removed branches, the color indicates uh, from which of the position the stem is discovered. So you can see immediately all the one colored stems are discovered just in one of those. Um, uh, positions in the panorama, there is a, a stem behind this other stem, and then here are the stems which would have been included. Um, and there is a stem with three colors, but none of, of the uh, three positions could cover the entire stem. So you can also see uh, the gain in, in tree detection and, and space of area and uh, with this manual method. Um, yeah, another image uh, where uh, from the central scan the discovered trees are in green color, uh, depending how close they are to the center, the, the dark green are closer to the center and the light uh, green are uh, far away, and all the orange trees uh, within this image, uh, the video as well from, from this, um, are the, the additionally uh, discovered trees. So another image uh, of this kind to see uh, what, what it can add to a, to a scan. So, this cylinder fitting, you always have some, some noisy uh, point clouds on the bark and uh, in this case, if you scan just from one side, uh, you will capture only half of the tree. So this is a disadvantage uh, regarding point cloud. And, uh, but we try to probably make uh, an advantage out, out of this disadvantage using the edges instead of uh, the of the point cloud uh, in, instead of the cylinder fitting with the point cloud and this um, would also um, possibly convince the NFI people who measure the stand always the same on the same position uh, in the same direction and they do not care if the stand is uh, uh, a circular or oval, in, but, but they, they do the same measurements and then measure very accurately the growth. So looking at the stems always from the same direction from a marked point could uh, be an enhancement regarding uh, the annual increments or the, the relation of the annual increments just by doing this. And of course, you get a, a terrain model from the scanner to know where the 130 or 150 regarding uh, which system you have uh, for measuring is. But uh, this could um, also be an, an, an enhancement. Because you always have noise, you have noise from the sensor, you have noise from the fusion of the point clouds, you have noise from the bark and uh, probably from small branches and if you look always the same uh, from the same position that the tree it could be 
be uh, an advantage. Yeah. Um, looking at the design of, of inventories, uh, where these uh, terrestrial captures are embedded, this is our normal uh, design for temporal um, uh, temporal sample plot plots. Um, we are looking at the lineup matrix of segmented areas and putting the sample plots on, on the segments and then try to get the wall-to-wall -wall interpolation. Uh, we could as well put the sample plots on GDI footprints and we will surely try this out as soon as those data are available um, in order to extrapolate and, and yeah, but uh, the, the, the most interesting thing probably is uh, to embed sampling into an NFI design, an existing NFI design where you have uh, uh, every five kilometers a, a cluster of sample plots and there the, the low altitude missions from ALS where I have very high resolution data uh, could be a very good approach to position uh, the, the sample plots uh, upon such a low altitude mission strike with, let's say, 500 or 1000 points per square meter, where you can have, uh, yeah, this is again this layer. Uh, and if you're looking uh, at, at the point clouds, this is the Area multiple coverage, the low altitude, the TLS coverage, and you can uh, have a transmission of three properties uh, between the, the, these two layers, and you have a transmission of static properties between the other layers. So, the, the disadvantage of, of, of um, the fixed sample, permanent sample plots with the uh, layer in between can also be turned to a, an advantage uh, if you apply this strategy. So, the technical challenges uh, in, you have a very slow and, and mostly undisturbed rotation of the arm, uh, but we, we will have an eye view to, to record some vibrations. Um, yeah, you have the ALS, TLS matching, uh, of course. Um, in, in our uh, ideal inventory workflow, we want to have uh, the inventory optimization on, with the tablet, and you probably can use Pitali factor something like six to make uh, the measurements on the trees with the caliper to get the models for for the diameters, and you probably take the factor, Pickley factor two, for uh, having some some tree properties like tree species or damages on the stems, and you have much more trees uh, to go into growth modeling and other things. So you have a, a multi-step even within the sample plot, uh, but. You will need a local navigation uh, with high accuracy from the scanner. The scanner, uh, the, the tablet could show where the uh, scanner is actually scanning, so you are not running into the scan. So there uh, yeah, are uh, yeah. all, all those uh, challenges, the diameter extraction uh, with that images will be another one. So this is, I, I already mentioned some of those items, that our ideal inventory workflow. Uh, we want to, to get uh, offline voice, voice input, or voice recognition into this work, workflow. Because filling out forms on tablets is always a bit annoying thing. And you randomly capture many tree and side items while working around there. And while you are standing in front of one tree and, and have some uh, damage on the bark recorded, you on the opposite side and see a tree which has a broken tree crown and, and so on. And you have to identify those trees 
And if you are working with a second volume of ten trees, you can mentally manage those ten trees in, in your mind, but you're not anymore uh, capable to manage fifty trees in your mind. So uh, this needs tree recognition and a proper uh, navigation of the second volume. Yeah. This is uh, the, the limitations if you are in tropical forest with very thick trees, the, the one meter uh, uh, outlayer or will probably not be enough and, and one meter is all, almost at the limit if you are in plantations where trees do not get, a, get bigger than 30 centimeters, you could reduce this to let's say 70. Uh, centimeters, so less instability and so on, but uh, with very thick trees and very dense understories you will get to your limits, but in moderate forest and plantations uh, the efficiency can be uh, very much enhanced. So, the prototype is under construction, we get the uh, moving part already and the center integration is in process, we plan to do it faster, but <laughs> it's as always you apply for some funding for, for this prototype and so on, it takes time. Um, so I, I hope that we can present some data sets at next year's Forest Sub in Krakow uh, and uh, show a small amount of, of uh, series production at Silver Mesa 2021. Uh, yeah, and uh, if you think about this kind of snapshot where you have a very uh, precise defined center point for the scan uh, with all those possibilities to, to be derived, uh, a snapshot which is not only a 3D point cloud but also uh, a set of images coloring this point cloud or using uh, depth panorama, you could uh, link this or freeze this or certify this by blockchain or watermarks. And when we are in the permanent discussions of how NFIs are comparable uh, from one country to the next country, this could be kind of a snapshot that uh, with the watermark or the blockchain certification is uh, one frozen uh, documentation of the forest from a special time or a well-defined uh, place. Um, and if you have new methods to work on this data set, you can do uh, in five or ten years take the, the initial data set into a new uh, feature extraction uh, and stagnant uh, extraction algorithms, but you take the frozen uh, certified data set from the year 2021, for example. So, this was my 